Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald near Nauvoo. This round house overlooking the Mississippi River is a long way in many respects from a grass hut in Hawaii. This story will explain. Irene, you always wanted to live in a round house. I have. Why, why in the world a round house? Well, number one, the acoustics. It is beautiful. Really? I love the acoustics in a round house oh, because okay. I am a musician. Uh -huh. And uh, the winds don't take round down. And uh, when we lived in Hawaii, there were a lot of uh, hurricanes and mm -hmm. things. And what was left sometimes in some areas were the round houses standing mm -hmm. and the other ones the were flat. The flat houses were gone. Gone. Well, listen, we don't need to talk in the pantry, but I wanted to start here <laughs> so we could move so we okay. could move into the wider part of the house. Right. Let's go this way okay. and take a, get a better look at, at uh, this from a broad view. <laughs> One thing you can say about a roundhouse, it sure does open up for you, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> opens up, and it opens up round. Um, and you can go round and round. So yes, I finally have my round to it. You do, and you've got, you've got your view clear around, and yes. you know, you've got your husband Tomasi over here. He's got his, his looking glasses, he's got his binoculars out, and he can see the Grand Mississippi River from, from almost any angle. And uh, what you've done is you've got this wonderful uh, effect of everything comes out from the center. That's right. And it's, it's, a, it's a very comfortable feeling, isn't it? Good. I'm glad you're yeah. comfortable yeah. with that. You've been <laughs> living here for only a few months. We moved here April 2nd. Mm -hmm. Yes. So things have just barely been working and we have a whole lot more to do. We're going to get a good look at this house, but before we get started, this would not have been possible for you without some of your friends and people you met here in Nauvoo. That's correct. You, you got some really expert work, with, particularly yes. with the wood yes. and, and an old friend of yours who happens yes. to be a lady contractor. That's right. And you could not live in a place like this. No, without their no, it would have never been possible. Uh, I told her, I said, oh, she said, Irene, you've always wanted a roundhouse. And mm -hmm. I said, yes, but we'll just go for it in the next world. And she <laughs> says, no, I think you can do this. And so we talked more, and her name is Vicki Andrus, mm -hmm. and I've known her for 30 years. Wow. She lived in Hawaii for a while. Her mm -hmm. husband was a contractor at that time, mm -hmm. and that's how we met. Yeah. And a local connection here. Oh. There's a fella here in Nauvoo who collects and puts together, reassembles yes. log cabins and log homes. Yes. You happen to be the beneficiary of one that he found that was more than 200 years old. 1750. And, and the wood, yeah, the wood that you'll see on the outside of your house here is uh, older than this republic. It, That's correct. Uh, it is just ancient stuff. It yeah. is. And it's yeah. beautiful. Uh, the patima and the colors of this wood, when I went into Dave's cabins uh, and I saw that, it just took my breath away, the mm -hmm. color. And uh, there are some of the walls that have uh, notches where they use the broad axe. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the color of it. People mm -hmm. do too much throwing away in our world. I, I think, I think the, the, was it in Virginia? Was it 1750 Virginia? Is that where the log home was? Somewhere in, somewhere in the east? Pennsylvania. 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 Okay. And uh, that happened. Uh, these, this log house was a very a wonderful log house, apparently. Mm -hmm. And someone built a barn around it. The barn deteriorated. Someone else <laughs> bought the land. Well, I think I'll sell this log cabin on eBay. Mm -hmm. So a fellow uh, in Missouri bought it, and he was a chiropractor. And I think he looked at the size of the logs. Mm -hmm. I think I'll get another logs deal. A little discouraged. Yeah, I yeah. mean, he couldn't even move those. No, things. he couldn't. Oh, and so he bought a forklift, and so uh, when he built his log cabin out of other logs, that's when he contacted Dave and he says, well, I'll sell the forklift and the logs mm -hmm. for $7,000. <laughs> and so Dave told me about it. My aunt had passed away and I had the money and I wrote him a check. Okay. And that's how I got these beautiful yeah, logs beautiful. and I am so thankful. People might be wondering, why are we standing in front of musical instruments? Well, in, you, you also build musical yes. instruments. Yes. And we're going to talk and, and hear a little bit about that later in the program. But before we do that, I want you to take us around your round house. Okay. You kind of show us around a little bit, okay? Come around. Okay, Come let's around. go that way.
Now, I can't help but notice your, your cooking table here. <laughs> Another huge piece yes, of this, this wood. Yes, uh, <laughs> these are two logs <laughs> of, the, of this uh, wood, mm -hmm. and it is a pine wood. And I showed Dave a picture of a log underneath. Uh, and he says, would you like one like that? And I said, I'd love one like that. And so if you look underneath, you mm -hmm. see that that's a big old pine yeah, log that he saved from somebody's fire. And, and so when we do, we do a lot of entertaining. And so we just ladle this with mm -hmm. bunches of food. Mm -hmm. And um, you've always got a buffet line going. I have you? a buffet mm -hmm. line going. You, you got an antique stove that you're, that's like your mom used to cook on. That's, no, not my mom. My your grandmother. Grandma. Okay. My grandma and my it. aunt. Uh -huh. And I have things on it that belong to her as well. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, I'm that unpacking nice. those things. And of course, in the ceiling here, you can see you've got your you've got your little um, uh, a, light light there. I have a skylight you know. here. Mm -hmm. If you come at certain times of the day, the skylight shines right here. It's a really beautiful time, and I love stained glass. So if I get a chance, I put stained glass mm -hmm. wherever I can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to learn how to do stained glass. We'll see some of your some of your windows that you have yeah. <laughs> that you have uh, put in. That's your sewing room. We're going to leave yes. that go because that's kind of cluttered. That's kind of cluttered right but now. But you got a guest bathroom here that I still do. have you still do. It's got some paint. You yes. still got some stuff going on here. <laughs> but this is kind of neat because your your friend that uh, that helped you Vicky put this together. Vicky Andrews uh, built this wonderful. Uh, the shower is really neat. It is really neat. It is called Fossil Crete, mm -hmm. and uh, it's vertical cement. And when she first put it on. And it looked kind of ugly, you know. Mm -hmm. And then she put another coat uh, on it, and then she has these stamps. And so she stamped each one, mm -hmm. and uh, then we measured it so that it would fit. I wanted it, if ever I had uh, someone come that is in a wheelchair, and I have friends that are wheelchair bound, and I say, I've got a shower you can use. And I wanted it that low. And there's no water. When we take a shower in this, there's no water mm -hmm. all over here. Mm -hmm. and then we have a little toilet behind the door. Mm -hmm. Neat. So that works. <laughs> Let's go. We keep going around. You, you right. can walk around until you get dizzy in this house. This, uh, yeah. <laughs> we put things away. This is nice away. because you and Tomasi both have office space here. This you is have really office neat. space. My husband also. I'm trying to encourage him to do writing, mm -hmm. and uh, he he will write his book. If he would just <laughs> stop the Scrabble, right? Yeah, that's it. that's it. That's it. If he just stop writing. the Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> and look at this bed. My good. Oh, what a view too. The what view, a view is so beautiful. The sounds at night are marvelous. Marvelous sounds at night. Well, I can hear the frogs right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're pretty loud. That's they're, that's They're nice. just all glad that 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 they had more rain and get more mud yeah, they're to work feeling with. Good, aren't they're they? they're good. <laughs> another another skylight here. Yes. Um, we do see stars at night. Mm -hmm. And. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we wake up later to see the clouds go by, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So we talk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no yeah. hurry to go to sleep because you're just huh. gonna have to wake up to see the stars. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Dave's son built this bed. His name is Lance Hartle, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very well done. And I'm very grateful to Lance. For it that. sure is sturdy. Oh, oh yeah. Well, nothing in this it, house this is, is gonna, this is not is moving collapse. anywhere. <laughs> That's for sure. Let's take a, a quick look in there. And this is uh, your master bathroom. Master bathroom, that's right. My favorite bathroom I've ever had. <laughs> um, I, I, when I take a bath here, we have, we have a family of cardinals. And so with this little hill, they come over here and they fool around and then they fly off. And oh, couldn't get better than that. <laughs> I see ferns growing and, mm -hmm. and we'll landscape that a little better. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. this is an antique sink. And I thought, well, I'll just do some logs to make sure that it holds up good. And this is the, uh, when looking for an antique bathtub, look for ones that might have enamel on the outside as well as the inside. Mm -hmm. And this is a wonderful bath. All right. These are alder, alder doors. Alder. That's alder. the kind of wood they are, huh? Yeah. Now here again, you get a real good look here. Yeah. At the kind of wood that you're talking about. This is That's the right. 1750s wood that came out of that. And to the show you, when we ran out of cement when we were working, and you know, I might just leave it like this because people ask me, how did you insulate this house? And Dave taught us, you put this pink stuff here and you uh, have these staples there and mm -hmm. then you just cover the staples with the cement and it holds. Because mm -hmm. usually cement doesn't like to hold the wood unless there's something right, there. Right. 
mm -hmm. and they've built all of these beautiful stairs. Uh, these are cedar logs. This this log has a name. Her name is Jessica. This has log has yeah. a name. Huh? <laughs> Did, have you named all of them or just Jessica? Oh, this one here. We needed to have a name for this guy. I sanded him out, and we walked and stumbled over that guy for a long time. <laughs> and his they brought him in when the river was frozen and snow was everywhere. Where's he? He said, well, I think we'll bring that log in. <laughs> and so Dave and that bunch of men brought it in. And uh, so we laughed. We were telling about that this is Jessica. And he said, well, how about this one be named Man from Snowy River? And so his name is Man from Snowy River. He looks like he grew there. Yeah, I, I know mean, he does. Guys... Yeah, Dave reinforced it underneath. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm going to have uh, probably a raccoon, a pretend raccoon in yeah, here for grandchildren. Yeah, popping his head out of Yeah, yeah, you that's bet. what we'll do. <laughs> now, the next thing I want to do is go upstairs because, right. the, I mean, the, the stairs they're, they're are stunning. Yeah. They I are. mean, when you look they're at each, each stunning. step, they're just stunning. So I think what you and I will do is go up there, and there's a loft, a sleeping loft. Yes, there, right? I, okay. I wanted to have a place for my family to come, not to move in, mm -hmm. but to come. And so I'll have um, the parents stay in the queen-size bed and bring sleeping bags for the children. These logs are built out of cedar wood. You're talking about the steps, right? The steps uh -huh. are built. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. And uh, Dave Hartle designed this staircase. <laughs> the <laughs> you staircase. can guess that, staircase. The staircase is, again, very sturdy. <laughs> very sturdy. <laughs> yes. Let's move over here. Now, okay. what, speaking of sturdy, what are these sturdy things? Uh, these are aspen wood. And uh, they were in a fire in Parley's Canyon, and Dave brought them back here to Nauvoo. Mm -hmm. His uncle had a cabin there, and the cabin burnt down. Sad. They came back, and all of these. Uh, Parley's Canyon is in Utah. Uh -huh. It's a. It's not far from Provo. Uh -huh. And so Dave thought, well, I think I'll take those logs back, and I'll do something with them. And I did a lot of sanding of a lot of these logs. Maybe that first two set I didn't, but I, I probably sanded most all mm -hmm. of these mm -hmm. and uh, the ones down there. Sanding logs is addictive. Oh, it is so well, fun because you, you get down to the wood and you feel it and you can talk to the wood. And Well, I'm a woodworker. It, so. it, well, it smells good, too. Yes. It yes, it does. Too. It does. Now, I wanted to stand here sort of right in the middle because you've got the round skylight here. Right. And, and then that radiates right down onto your medallion, which is yes. in the middle of the floor. Right. And I just love this wooden floor because it radiates out just like, just like the sun. You didn't by any chance have that in mind when you designed it, did you? Yes. <laughs> that is correct. What is the medallion? I see four, I, it looks like four arrows, four squiggly it arrows. Is. What is it, the... is, uh, it is a design that is, I would say it's a compass Mm -hmm. East, west, north, and south, uh -huh. going in a windy direction. In a windy direction. Yeah. And is it true north? I mean, is that? Oh the yes. There's one. The one that points towards the fireplace is true north. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. All right. It is true. I had I had Dave come and give me a compass uh, mm -hmm. reading. <laughs> <laughs> and so the fireplace is due north, and yeah. that's sort of looking roughly upriver as well, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it is. This and is the widest spot in the Mississippi across from us. Really? It is. I'll be darned. If you ever
Irene, we're looking at an artist's rendition of the the grass hut that you right. and Tomasi lived in <laughs> in Hawaii. A little different from your roundhouse in Nauvoo. Oh yes, and considerably. Tomasi built the hut. Yes, he you did. did. You did the, th the thatched roof. Well, both of us did it. Is that right? Yes, and he had some other Tongan uh, uh, friends of his mm -hmm. come and help build it as well. Mm -hmm. And I had a lean-to here. The kitchen was was here, and this was only supposed to be temporary. Mm -hmm. It was two years. Oh yeah. When we moved here, our oldest was six years old, mm -hmm. and we had five children mm -hmm. then. And I learned how to cook outside. I learned how to work with kerosene lamps. We learned how to wash in the streams. Um, yeah. We used used windows. Um, this is a big old mango tree, and mm -hmm. Tomasi grew a lot of taro. Mm -hmm. And we parked our car up high. It was dark, but she wanted to show there was a pathway coming down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we have pictures, but they're packed away. We haven't unpacked everything mm -hmm. yet. You mentioned, you talked about, about your children, and I'm just going to mention here mm -hmm. because we're going to see some pictures of them, but you have 14. 14 children. children, you bet. And you have 40, how many grandchildren? 48. 48 yeah. grandchildren. And, so uh, far, there's some so on far. the way. <laughs> Two are not that's married right. yet. <laughs> that's right, and you may be surprised by the others too. You never know. Yes, that's right. But it, but it's it's phenomenal when you think about uh, about about all of that. And now here you are, um, at the age of in your elder sixties, building uh, I'm your one, first round. We're house. both one year short of seventy. Is that right? Okay. That's well, right. I'm glad you said that because I wasn't going to say. Oh, your age. I'm I'm happy to reach the age <laughs> I am. <laughs> yeah. We mentioned. Um, your 14 kids yes, and 48 grandchildren That's right. and, and counting, you're, you're, they're probably going right. to be more. <laughs> and you know, we couldn't get a picture of all of them because no. they probably wouldn't fit all in one well, picture. But you, but wide we, angle lens. Yeah. <laughs> but we do have a photograph with a good number of them. This is all your 14 kids and some of the grandkids. Yes. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting to, to see. And in front of the temple, the Mormon temple in That's Hawaii. Right. That's right. Um, and, and Nauvoo, of course, is the reason you moved to this part of Illinois mm -hmm. to be near to be near, near the Mormon community. Yes. Um, so are, are your kids, are they all um, devout Mormon? Uh, some have chosen a few paths, mm -hmm. and, but they all follow the principles. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. And it would be really good to have them visit here. That would oh, be, yes. Yeah. In fact, oh, some yes. of them are moving to the area, aren't they? Yes, yeah. that's right. Neat. You know, we also, part of the reason I wanted to come and do a story with you is because I knew that you made musical instruments. Yes. And harps, particularly. I've never met a harp maker before. <laughs> but you make all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you and your husband play those instruments. Yes. And I wanted to sort of get a chance to hear some of that, too. Okay. All right. Irene, you made this harp. Yes. And you've made many harps. This is you? number 41. Number 41. Okay. But well, if we look around, you know, we also see dulcimers and psalteries and hammer dulcimers that you also make. Yes. But I, I'm intrigued by this because I've never been a harp, harp maker before. Oh. And just give us a little primer on a primer. harp. For, there's 34 strings. There's 34 strings on this harp. Mm -hmm. And every red string is a C. Well, you Mm -hmm. And every blue string is an F. And so that when you play the harp, you can look quickly and be orientated to where your notes are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, that, that explains that. But then I'm looking at all these pegs and little oh, doodads up here. These what? doodads up here, these are levers. And they change, they change the string to be a half step higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's C, and I raise it up, and it becomes C sharp. Okay. And, and all of these are raised in various ways to make different scales. Okay, so, okay, so that's how, for instance, a, a guitar player, for instance, will use something called a capo, which right. slides up the fingerboard, and that changes the key. That's On this, right. you change it with each, each string I lever. change it okay. with the levers up here. Okay, mm -hmm. there's one, another thing I'm, I'm interested in. This, is this the sounding board? Is that what this is called? This is, that's called the sounding board. Okay. These strings appear to disappear in, into the sounding board. They do. What, where they, do they go? They go to the back. And if I turn the harp around, you can get a good look at it. Well, I've never seen the back of a harp, and I'll bet many in the audience haven't either. All right. Okay. It's, there's, a, there's a knot on the inside. Uh, the soundboard is a very thin soundboard, making the resonance mm -hmm. sound so good. And there's a rib in here, 
he can feel that rib and see it. It goes down the middle. Uh -huh, it mm -hmm. goes down the middle. And that gives reinforcement for this harp. Each one of those strings is individually tied by a knot. Oh, yes. It's okay. called a harp knot. Even. And, and you've got to put your, get your fingers in there and tie each harp knot, I right? I tie it here, <laughs> string it through, and then I, then I tighten oh, okay. it up here. Okay. And each one of these are tightened up okay. here. Now, one other thing before you and Tomasi play something for us. Put that okay. harp back in, in position for us. All right. Just give it a real nice brush the way you hear that, whoop, oh. you know, so we can just hear what well, this sounds like. There's a beautiful way of doing like. it, glissando. Okay. But a glissando. Glissando. Yeah. That is pretty. Even I, I can even make yeah, it sound. Yeah, he good. can do that. <laughs> there you go. Good. Okay. Now, that's the extent of my musical skill. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you and Tomasi just to choose anything, okay? All right. And and play. I know he's got an auto harp. He's getting he ready does. to play. And you say he sings. He does. And, and everybody from his Polynesian island sings. They right? do. Okay. I okay. have not met a Tongan that can't sing. <laughs> okay. All right. Irene, now this interesting little instrument compared to harp, it's a little instrument, okay. is a lot of people will never even have heard of one of, of these. Of a psaltery. Psaltery. It's spelled P-S-A-L-T-E-R-Y, mm -hmm. and uh, it is after Psalms in the Bible. They speak of playing psaltery and harp in mm -hmm. the Bible. Whether they have this kind of instrument in the Bible or not, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't have all those pictures. But the, this instrument goes back one or two thousand years that they have pictures of. There's some wood, old woodcut that they would hold the instrument up with other small instruments like this, and they could see it was a triangle and a bow. Mm -hmm. And uh, this instrument uh, is fully chromatic. These are the white keys of the piano, and these are like the black keys of the piano. Okay. So. Ah, what a method. I'll be darned. Easy to do. And you made this. Yes. You build these as yes. well as harps yeah, and this, dulcimers. This one here is number 62. And, and, and you've sold all the rest of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, a good I, market people, for psalteries. People have come into my house and say, how much do you want for that? And I give them a price. Mm -hmm. And they say, can I pay you now? And I says, of course. <laughs> and I'll make another one. <laughs> Well, listen, it's, it's got a kind of a haunting sound. It's a very oh, yes. unique. It sounds a little like a violin, yes. but, but more edgy yes. than a violin. Yes, it is. And, uh, and it's got a lot of volume. I mean, it really oh. puts it out, doesn't it? Right. Um, you're going to play something for us. Yes. Okay? All right. Well, when I was a young girl, mm, I used to do Joan Baez songs, and one of them was Black is the Color of My True Love's Hair. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll try to All do right. this. Good. All right. Good. Black, black, black is the color of my true love's hair. His lips are wondrous and he speaks with care. The Black, black, black is the color of my true 
Irene plans to continue building harps. She's going to put a shed, a workshop, right next to the house on this side. Her plan is to make harps for the blind. She's already made three of those and given them away. With another Illinois story near Nauvoo, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. For a DVD copy of this episode of Illinois Stories, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, broadcast date, and topic. You may also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605 or by using our secure server by going online to networkknowledge.tv.